Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. What is your worst experience with bad neighbors? The matriarch of my crazy neighbors nailed all of the windows shut in their house, then removed the doorknobs and installed several deadbolts. This was to keep her grandkids home while she was at work and everyone else out. Child welfare stopped by and were okay with this. The kids were able to get one window open without her knowing and they would usually leave during the day and make it back before she got off of work. Eventually, there would be maybe a dozen young adults living there too, and they all used the window as the main entrance. It unfortunately bordered my driveway and was mere feet from my house. All hours of the day, people would be out there wiggling in and out of the window. People got tired of being cooped up and major fights broke out. I regularly heard bodies hitting walls or furniture or fists, yells of, well stop threatening and get your GD gun already. I have PTSD and it was just day after day of trying to keep myself calm. The kids had a pneumatic BB gun, a lookalike handgun, and one morning shot up my neighbor's car. She left to work at a hospital early in the morning before first light and didn't notice. When she shut her car door, all of the glass fell out of the windows. Later in the morning, he shot out a window in the school across the street. And a bit after that, he shot my husband in the shoulder when we were outside planting flowers. He kept shooting, even after the police arrived. The police called the matriarch, who unlocked all the deadbolts, took away the kid's gun, and drug them outside so he could be cuffed and taken away. The youngest was maybe nine. Since no one confessed or ratted, and police weren't sure which of the three did it, they were released and not charged. Thankfully, this act of physical violence against my husband got them evicted. After tearing up the house, breaking all the windows, and ripping out the electrical boxes and punching random holes in the walls, the kids went to the landlord's house with their look-alike handguns and shot up the windows in her house. Again, arrested, but being juveniles, no repercussions. A couple of weeks later, her vehicle and garage were firebombed, but no one was charged with that. I'm so glad they are gone. I live in a wonderful neighborhood, not rich by any means, but the most awesome people, but it's hard to enjoy the community with that going on next door. I hope they somehow find some peace with this life. Just straight up rednecks who wanted the full neighbor experience without putting in any effort themselves. It was like they'd moved from some hillbilly commune where you could just demand things of your neighbors. Every day when I got home from school, the three youngest kids would bang on our door until we gave them snacks. One of them, when denied snacks, came back and broke our glass door with a hammer. They turned the shared side yard, legally ours but shared because we weren't necessarily using it, into a lumber yard slash playground where they dug a massive pit for mud wrestling. No BS there. Mud wrestling. The second oldest kid, six in total, had an old AC air handling unit in the backyard that he was allowed to hit with a sledgehammer when he got angry. He got angry often, and at some pretty irregular hours. I ran into him at a bowling alley years after they moved away slash got kicked out slash went bankrupt. He had a tattoo across his chest that said Immortal Death in a black red black gradient. He also had giant scars all over his back, chest, and arms. He said he woke up in the middle of the highway on Halloween night all cut up. Who knows if that's true, but if it could happen to anyone, he was the guy. A few more redneck. Lighting bottle rockets out of the tailpipe on their dad's truck. The youngest kid got stuck in the mud pit up to his head and they couldn't get him out for hours. On rainy nights, they used to put these rusty cots in the front yard and sleep in the rain. That one didn't even register as redneck, felt more like an Adams Family thing to do. They somehow got their hands on what looked like municipal park playground equipment, one of which was a steel slide about two stories tall. One of the younger kids took a bike up to the top of it and tried to ride down, but fell over backwards and smacked his head on the metal steps a few times. The mom watched him do it, and I specifically remember her saying, he's gotta learn somehow, after he fell. A bunch of things with my ding-dong neighbor. 
She had a large dog that hated my older, smaller dog. One day her dog ran into my yard and bit my dog. She did apologize for this one, did not happen again. Neighbor dumped her lawn clippings into my backyard. Had to ask her to stop and clean up her mess. She decided to build a fence. No survey, so I paid for a survey of my property. She started building her fence three feet over on my property. I had her stop and remove the fence. She was angry and never rebuilt it. I painted my house. She painted her house, same color. I bought a new car. She bought a new car, same color, same configuration. There's other minor stuff, but that's enough. Odd person. You get a window made of glass, she gets a window made of glass. You get a clock radio, she cannot afford a clock radio. Great success! He lived in the apartment right below my husband and I. It went from constant complaints to him calling the cops on us multiple times to him leaving threatening messages on our car and front door. When we first moved in, he was upset with the landlord for renting above him, left plenty of unpleasant notes and interrupted quite a few times when we were talking to the landlord. When we moved in, we only had a mattress and no other furniture, but he kept calling the landlord saying that we were moving furniture around 2am and had our TV at full blast. After the 8th complaint in 2 months of us still moving around furniture and TV being too loud, we finally showed our apartment to the landlord. We literally didn't have a TV and still only had out mattress. Then the neighbor started leaving notes on our car telling us to keep it down and he even put in writing, there needs to be no noise after 10pm or else I'll call the cops. We usually didn't even get home until after 11 p.m. and we were respectful to make sure we kept things down because we knew that not everyone had our work schedule. So we tried keeping it down even more and there were so many instances when we'd be eating dinner or cuddling quietly or even sleeping and he'd be banging on his ceiling slash our floor. After a few months, he started calling the cops and it got to the point where even the cops told him to stop calling about a noise complaint because it's a landlord issue and every time they came, they never heard anything. The last time they showed up, I was asleep and my husband ended up talking to them and explaining everything. They suggested that we file a harassment complaint. Then the cop showed up at the coffee shop I worked at at the time and explained that they were getting almost nightly calls and they suggested to me too that we should file a harassment complaint against the neighbor. Then he started leaving threatening notes on our car and front door and we kept hearing our doorknob jiggle. He claimed that a friend had sat outside our apartment for two hours and listened to all the noise we were making. He's a retired cop and will call in a few favors if we continue making noise. He knows where we park our car, so we better start parking it somewhere else if we don't want to get it damaged, etc. We kept the notes and made copies for the landlord and let him know that this was what we were dealing with, so we're just keeping him in the loop before S starts getting real, aka we're tired of this, and if an old guy gets his S rocked, then just know that it's been a long time coming. The last complaint was when he ran outside to the landlord screaming that something needed to be done about us because he heard our bed squeak the night before and how dare he rent to some crazy college kids who are partying and having S all night. The landlord finally told him to F off and stop being a bitter old man. Then the neighbor took a total 180 and we found out that he had decided to sue the landlord and was moving. Suddenly, the neighbor kept offering us rides when one of us were walking. He stopped complaining and leaving notes, but our doorknob kept jiggling and turning at midnight, and whenever we would check on our door, we'd hear someone running down the hall as we'd approach our door. He eventually moved away, and shockingly, we haven't gotten a complaint from any other neighbors in the last three years we've lived here. I lived in a three-story apartment building on the middle floor. The bottom floor was basement apartments. It was a very quiet building and a lot of people were older and lived there 10 years or more. And this weird, creepy a-hole moved in below us. He would play music loud all night and I had to be up for work at 5am. He wouldn't answer the door so we could ask him to turn it down. So I had to jump up and down until he heard it. He had peed off girls banging on his door screaming for hours and he was home but wouldn't answer. She ran out and poured nail polish all over his car. His apartment was basement, but he had a huge window that was right next to the stairs to get in. 
He never closed the curtains and you would see directly down into his living room where he had built a S-swing with bondage stuff hanging on it. I had to explain what it was to everyone that came over, even my mom. Then one day a cop knocked on the door. He was holding about 20 pairs of women's underwear and asked me to pick out mine. It was like three pairs and the cop said throw them away. The downstairs neighbor had been wearing them because he was stealing them out of the laundry room. I guess the upstairs neighbor was walking in the building and seen her underwear hanging on the S-swing and called the cops. So they arrested him for stealing our underwear, the landlord evicted him. When he got out of jail, he was so peed he was getting evicted, he went and bought a bunch of sand and covered the whole apartment in sand and turned the air conditioning all the way up and left it after he switched the electric back into the landlord's name. He was a nightmare neighbor. Does my former upstairs landlord count? He was a 19 year old Chinese guy whose father had bought him the $5 million house we were already living in the basement suite of when it was sold up front. Dude started periodically complaining that I wouldn't stop cooking spicy food or curry despite the fact that I'm a white person who is a huge wimp with chilies. The most I'd used at any point when he complained was a black bean soup large enough to feed an army with three dry chipotles tossed in. I caved and switched to making only white people food for a few weeks to make him shut up. He still complained about spicy food when I was, among other things, frying onion in butter to make scrambled eggs and cooking potato soup. I came to the conclusion that he was so rich and clueless he probably never lived within 100 feet of a kitchen in his life. Finally, having established that his definition of spicy food was literally any and all human food, he quotes on quote, told me that I should be eating my spicy food in restaurants instead of cooking it. He then illegally evicted me with two weeks notice on the grounds that I wouldn't stop making curry. We literally spoke to a lawyer who told us we could fight it, but he genuinely had no idea what would possibly effing happen in court because at no point in human history has a Chinese person evicted a white person for frying onions because they're that racist against Indian people and also have never lived within 200 feet of a kitchen. This family keeps on moving their stuff over to our side of the property. We confronted them, but they keep on saying it's their land because their house has a fireplace that's extruded into our yard. We had to request paperwork from the city to tell them that's not how it works. Then they just kept on throwing their dog ass over the fence and even dug a hole below the fence to let their dog over to P and S. We moved shortly after because we found a bigger and better place to purchase. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, the likes, and the comments. See you in the next video.